Hello everyone, this is Dr. Leslie Young. I am a pediatrician for the past 23 years. I graduated from UCLA undergraduate and went to UC Irvine for medical school and finished my pediatric residency training at UCLA. So go Bruins. And I'm here to answer some of the most common questions regarding COVID-19 vaccine. Um, because I am a pediatrician, I have practical frontline information and experience working with kids. The adult information is the ones uh, is the one I extrapolated from the information gathered from the CDC website. So let's begin. Uh, the first question is, how can I be sure that the vaccine is safe for me? How about for my children? Well, we know this because, as you know, this is no longer an experimental vaccine, like when I was in the very, very beginning, which I was, you know, one of the first to get it. But even though I got it at, uh, I was December 19, 2020, there were already uh, about 40,000 people who volunteered to get the vaccine first. And many of those people who volunteered to be the human subject of the vaccine, uh, they were my colleagues. And even some of my colleagues' children, they volunteer to be first in line to get the vaccine just because they have so much confidence in the safety profile and efficacy of the vaccine. In fact, some of my colleagues in the very, very early days, they volunteer their children intentionally because they want to protect their children as soon as possible. As you may remember, it took a long time before the vaccine was available for children. Uh, second question is, I hear that uh, the vaccine has side effects and how bad are the side effects and how common are the side effects? I would say that if you say the side effects, it just means any adverse reaction, any unwanted effect from the vaccine is considered a side effect. So anything that's unpleasant, including a sore arm, uh, a swollen arm, redness on the arm, those are side effects and those are the most common ones. I would say those happen um, in the majority of the times, which means they happen more than half the people who get the vaccine. I would say, based on my clinical experience, I would say older children, teenagers, they tend to get a higher dose of the vaccine because of their age. Um, probably about 80% of them will experience some sort of sore arm um, for about two days. And most of the time, that's the extent of all side effects. Some people, which probably going from the order of 20 to 40 percent of people, they may get um, some fever, some headache, and being more tired than usual. And most of those effects will wear off after the initial 24 hours after vaccination. So you say side effects in general, including very mild side effects, that's fairly common, but they're very mild, they're very localized, and they're generally very well tolerated. The third question is, how about the safety of the new bivalent uh, Omicron booster? I hear that it is barely tested. This is true. The, the booster um, is not the, the original booster. This is the bivalent booster. And by meaning bivalent means that the MRA containing these MRA vaccines are basically the ones designed to generate the proteins that will protect you from the original COVID-19 strain, as well as the BA4 and BA5 uh, newer strain. These are the newer variants. And so it, they contain both the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine contain 50% of the original MRA strain and 50% the MRA that's, you know, for BA5 and BA4. I think it's about 25% BA4 and 25% BA5. So that makes up to a total of 100%. So why is it not tested and released? And I know it's not tested in the human subject. Well, this is the same reason that um, this vaccine essentially works exactly the same as before. Just as uh, every year, as you know, we need to get a set of flu vaccine year after year. It's not that, oh, 15 years ago, I got my flu shot, so I'm fine now. No, because every year, the circulating flu strains are different and we try to predict what's coming based on what's happening in the other hemisphere. Um, 
So we don't test the flu vaccine year after year because it's essentially the same. The way we make them the same, the way they work is the same. So another analogy is that just like when you, um, you know, when you get a new version of your iPhone, right? When you get an iPhone, if your iPhone 11 did not explode in your hand and kill you, when you upgrade to iPhone 12, you don't really expect the 12 to be a ticking time bomb and explode in your face, right? Because they're very similar. When you upgrade your phone, the current modern phone from the previous generation phone is very similar. Maybe you get more megapixel in your camera. Maybe you can take picture under low lighting condition, but they're just minor tweaks. And so that's the main reason why you don't need to test the Omicron bivalent specific vaccine because the way they work is exactly the same as before. And number four question, what are they putting into my body when I get vaccinated? Some people on social media say that it is a live virus vaccine, which is actually true. So way in the beginning, this is a vaccine that nobody really talks too much about anymore. It, they probably got the biggest publicity when it started causing um, blood clots and stroke in young women getting the vaccine. This is, the, of course, the Johnson Johnson Janssen vaccine. Uh, Johnson Johnson, the company, the vaccine itself is called the Janssen. So this vaccine is made in a very interesting mechanism. Basically, they do use a live virus, not the COVID virus. This is a virus actually called the adenovirus. So the way they make it is very similar to the Greek mythology Trojan horse. Basically, they take the genetic material from COVID-19 virus and they insert it into a different virus. They, they will inactivate the inside mechanism of this virus that they're using as a Trojan horse, and they basically empty it out, and they put the genetic information for the COVID um, virus into this virus. So this virus will still be alive, and yet they're carrying a different payload. So when this live virus vaccine, the Johnson Johnson one, gets into your body, it injects its the genetic material of the COVID-19 virus. So yeah, your body will see the genetic material um, and they will replicate, they will make proteins, the COVID-19 um, spike protein to be precise in your body. So your body's immune system will detect this new protein and react to it and prepare for um, a true infection. So of all the vaccine, the only vaccine that contains live virus is the Johnson Johnson one. The Moderna, Pfizer, Novavax, these vaccines do not have live virus. Um, so specifically, the Moderna and the uh, Pfizer vaccine, it contains the mRNA, which is the genetic information of the COVID-19 virus. Only the genetic information, not even protein. The Novavax vaccine, which was approved recently, a few months ago, it doesn't contain the genetic information of the COVID-19 vaccine uh, virus, but it contains the protein, the spike protein of the COVID-19 virus. So these are just the inert molecule of the genetic information and the inert protein. So can they hurt you? No, just like if you have a car that can hit you, yes, a car can be a threat to your, your body's health and cause injury. But if you have a stack of tires from Goodyear or you know, Michelin, a stack of tires cannot hurt you because they're just sitting there inertly. Just like the proteins in the messenger RNA, the genetic information cannot really hurt your body because they're just information. So another question is, uh, why should I get vaccinated if the breakthrough cases are so common despite vaccination? And is it, does that mean the vaccine is not effective? Well, to answer that question, I think the a perfect analogy, which I've been using over the years, is that um, like the seatbelts. Well, we all understand if you put on your seatbelt, if you get swiped by a 16-wheeler on the freeway, you're probably not going to go walk away on skate. Your, your car may get severely damaged. You might get a broken bone. Um, but if you're wearing a seatbelt, it drastically increases the chance that you're going to be alive by, you know, after the accident. So
So the fact that you're injured in an accident despite wearing seatbelt, does that mean the seatbelt is ineffective? No, because the seatbelt most likely saved your life from greater bodily harm. And the seatbelt has done its job. Same thing goes with airbags, right? You know, why, why, why do we bother wear airbags if, you know, the airbags can actually come out with such powerful force. It can actually scrape your face. It can, you know, shoot projectile. As you probably know, you know, babies, you should not put in the front seat because when the airbags is deployed, it can push the car seat backward and injure the baby. So, I mean, just like vaccination has side effects, wearing a seatbelt and using airbags in a car can have side effects too, but we take those side effects knowingly because we know that the way these mechanisms, these tools can protect you from serious injuries, the benefit far outweighs the risk of having um, side effects from using these tools. So, Another question is, this is number six. All my friends who had COVID said that it's just like a cold. So if so, you know, why should I get vaccinated? Because, you know, getting a COVID is just no big deal, right? Well, tell that to the million Americans who are already dead, right? Tell them that to their, their mothers and their sisters and their wives and their children. Um, I had children who lost both of their parents to COVID. And I can guarantee all of you know at least someone who died from COVID. So... I mean, can you think of a single person who died from the common cold? I mean, I don't. I mean, I've been a doctor for the last 23 years. I don't know anyone who died from the common cold, but I know plenty of people who died from COVID. So it's not a big deal. And then you say, well, all my friends who are talking, well, the fact that they're talking means that they're not dead. That's, well, let's hope, you know, because if you're hearing dead people, then you have serious mental issues. Um, so... Basically, there's a selection bias here because the people who are talk, talking about they, they got a mild illness because they, they did. The, the ones who got really sick, they're probably not telling people that they, you know, they got a mild illness or the fact that they're dead, you know, they won't be talking anymore. Now, number seven, uh, a lot of people think that they, they've already gotten the primary series, means the two shots. You know, why should they get the booster shots? What, what's so special about the booster shots? Now we know that um, the efficacy and the immunity that you get from vaccination doesn't last forever. When we first had the COVID-19 vaccine, we really don't know how long it works because even though we have you know, tens of thousands of volunteers who got the vaccine, and we know it works, but we don't know how long. So now we have some pretty good idea um, once you're vaccinated, you're probably protected quite well during the first, you know, I'll say three to five months. And after that, your immunity started to wear off. And so the booster basically is a reminder to your immune system how, how to protect your body again when the real infection is trying to establish itself. And then... Next question is kind of related to this one. Is it bad for my health to get multiple boosters? It seems like, well, isn't it enough? You know, if I got two shots from the primary series and I got a booster, why why are we talking about the you know another booster? This is especially relevant to the uh, the recent availability of the uh, Omicron specific bivalent uh, COVID nineteen vaccine. Well, I compare this to kind of like training for a fire, so. How do we train for a fire? And let's say your kids are at school or earthquake. You know, you have fire drills, right? Why do we have fire drills? You know, why don't you just wait until there's a fire and then, you know, figure it out things as it happens? Well, because if we have practiced and know what to do um, in case of an actual fire, we know what to do, not to panic, where to evacuate to, and how to minimize casualties, right? So the reason why you would get boosters is that you basically, the more fire drills that you go through, the better you will be able to uh, know what to do when there's an actual fire. And multiple boosters basically just means that you're allowing your body to go through multiple training sessions for the fire drills. So if you imagine if you train fire drills um, every six months, when there's an actual fire, 
you will probably have a pretty good idea what to do. Versus if you had a fire drill three years ago and has done nothing since, in cases of actual fire, you might not remember the training that you did from three years ago. And instead, you might panic or just you know resort to um, doing whatever that's come to your mind, which is not usually the best practice. And number nine, isn't natural immunity better than vaccines? Simply no. At the very beginning, we didn't know that. But three years into the pandemic, we know that with certainty. If you have contracted the COVID-19 and gotten sick, you are immune for about two months. So if you've gotten sick from COVID-19 in July, and right now it's September, you probably will not get COVID-19 again. But come October, you know, when you go trick-or-treating with your kids or your kids go trick-or-treating, they could get COVID-19. In fact, I have patients, the record, the current record holder is someone who got COVID-19 five times. So, and he is, uh, unfa he, he's unvaccinated. He's, he's still not vaccinated. He just doesn't believe in vaccines. You know, nothing you can do to convince him that otherwise. But instead, he chose to get COVID-19 over and over again. And he will probably get the seventh time soon enough because I think it's been more than two months since his last infection. So he's due to get another infection again. And how long does the vaccine's efficacy last? I think I touched that on already. And then how often do you need to get booster? Um, this is actually really, it's a really hard question to answer because the efficacy of the vaccine doesn't depend on just the vaccine itself. It depends on how your body's immunity react to the vaccine. Just kind of like if you imagine how effective is a fire drill? Well, if you in a classroom, you know, of kids, some some kids are probably going to learn the fire drill very quickly because they pay attention, they're conscientious, they're naturally very anxious, so they want to be prepared, so they will follow the fire drill, take it very seriously. And then there are other kids who are just like, whatever, you know, just I'm glad there's I don't have to sit in this classroom, but they're just, you know, picking the nose during the fire drill, not really paying attention to what's going on. Are they going to benefit as much from the fire drill? as the kids who are conscientious? Of course not. So some bodies immune system may pay a lot of attention when the vaccine is injecting to their body. So they know they practice, they take the drill very seriously. So they mount a very good immunity um, against potential future infection. And other people's immune system might not be so proactive. And how often do you get boosted? We don't know. Some people probably need to get boosted pretty often um, because they're body didn't react so strongly to the initial uh, primary series or the boosters, subsequent boosters. Um, but right now, in general, you know, I would say it's probably fair after about six months, your immunity will start to trend down. With the Omicron specific bivalent vaccine, which works a lot better than the original vaccine, is the immunity going to last a lot longer because the vaccine actually is targeted specifically to the BA4 and BA5 variants? Um, most likely. How long is it going to last? Is it going to last 10 years? Probably not 10 years. Um, is it going to last a year? Possible. You know, we don't know because this is relatively new and we're still learning. But one thing for sure is that we know this, uh, the bivalent Omicron specific vaccine is going to work better than the previous versions. Uh, and that's why, just a brief thing on the recommendation, which you can also see on the CDC website. Uh, so who will qualify for the new Omicron-specific bivalent uh, booster vaccine? Basically, anyone over the age of 12, if it has been more than two months since its last dose of the vaccine, whether it's um, the primary series or subsequent booster, you qualify for the vaccine. And for kids 12 to 17, the only bivalent booster that these kids qualify for is the Pfizer one. The Moderna has not been approved for children. You can get the Moderna bivalent Omicron specific vaccine booster if you're over um, the age of 18. And 
for those children who are uh, between the age of five and twelve, they actually are not yet eligible to get the bivalent Omicron specific booster. Uh, simply because FDA hasn't approved it. I anticipate that FDA will be approving it soon because it just makes sense. And one last thing is, if you haven't finished your primary series, which means if you have not gotten two doses of the vaccine uh, against COVID-19, uh, you do not qualify for the bivalent Omicron specific booster. Yeah, you have to finish your primary series in order to qualify for the bivalent vaccine. All right, I think that's uh, it's just gone over 20 minutes, so I think I talked enough. Um, I hope that's been helpful and useful and practical. And protect your family, stay safe. Bye-bye.